Good morning. We're going on the record. The time is 8.26 a.m. Today's date is August the 8th, 2022. This is media unit number one of the video recorded deposition of Felicia Saffold. This is taken in the matter of Deborah Kuther versus Milwaukee Public Schools, filed in the state of Wisconsin, Department of Workforce Development, Equal Rights Division, ERD case CR 2021 00861. This deposition is being held at Cross Law Firm, located at 845 North 11th Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My name is Jay Church. I'm the videographer. If we could have counsel please state your, your appearances and affiliation for the record, beginning with a noticing attorney, and then our court reporter will swear in the witness. Good morning. This is Ben Hitchcock Cross from Cross Law Firm, appearing for the complainant. Chris, we're in a uh, Von Bries and Roper on behalf of the respondent. Do you reserve any rest for anyone? Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall have the I do. Good morning, Dr. Saffold. Will you state and spell your name for the record, please? Felicia Saffold, F E L I C I A S A F F O L D. Do you know what a deposition is? I do. Has anybody explained to you the mechanics of a deposition? Yes. Okay. And has anyone told you to say anything that's not the truth? No. Did you talk to anyone from MPS about this deposition? I talked to my attorney who's sitting here today on Friday. And any MPS employees? No. Are you here because you want to be at this deposition? No, I was here because I was asked to be here. <coughs> do you know who Therese Freiberg is? I do. Who is Therese Freiberg? Um, she's in labor relations at MPS. Okay. I don't know her exact title or anything. Do you fear any retaliation for your testimony at this deposition today? No. Why not? I don't, I don't feel I have any reason to be fearful. The case isn't against me. I'm telling whatever I know. Okay, thank you. Do you know Jeremiah Holiday? I do. How do you know Jeremiah Holiday? He hired me in 2020. He was my supervisor. Okay. And uh, are you employed now? I am. Where are you employed? Milwaukee Public Schools. And how long have you been employed at Milwaukee Public Schools? Since October 2020, so I'm coming close to two years. Have you ever been <coughs> employed at Milwaukee Public Schools other than since October of 2020? Yes. When was that? Um, I was employed in 1990. Okay. And what was your job then? Teacher. Teacher, okay. Do you recall on what day in October of 2020 you started? I believe it was the 19th. Do you know Keith Posley? I do. How do you know Keith Posley? He's the superintendent of Milwaukee Public Schools. Was he involved in uh, hiring you? I don't know. He was my final step of the interview process. So he participated in the interview process to hire you? Was he was accurate? the final step of the interview process, yes. I had three interviews. Do you know Keith Posley in any other capacity? No. <coughs> Do you know Calvin Furman? I know who he is. Okay, how do you know Cal who Calvin Furman is? He was the deputy superintendent when I was hired. Did he participate in your hiring process? Not that I'm aware of. He wasn't in, in, oh, well, actually, I don't recall. He may have been with Dr. Posley on the final step, but I don't recall. Is there a time you did recall? Say it again. Is there a time you did recall whether or not Calvin Furman was on the uh, hiring com uh, committee? No, I, I, I don't recall. 
I believe it might have been the final interview, I believe was Dr. Posley, maybe Calvin Furman, and I think Dr. Holliday. I don't recall. I haven't thought about this in a long time. Do you know Deborah Keitha? I do. How do you know Deborah Keitha? She was the literacy manager when I took the position of senior director of curriculum instruction. Okay. Did you supervise Deborah Keitha? I did. How long did you supervise her? Um, from the time I was hired until, I want to say December, I'm not sure. Are you not sure about the date in December? I'm not sure about the date. Okay. And are you aware of what happened to Deborah Keither after she was no longer your super, uh, your subordinate? You can check the form questions, broad and vague. Go ahead and answer if you can. I'm not sure what, what I'm not sure of the question. What happened sure. to her? I don't know. So there was a, a period of time where you did supervise uh, Deborah Keither. And then there was a period of time where you no longer supervised Deborah Keither. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And are you aware of uh, what happened to Deborah Keither immediately after you no longer supervise her? Same objection. Go ahead and answer if you can. I'm not, I don't know how to answer that. I don't understand the question. Okay. So again, we're clear that you supervised Deborah Keither, and we're also clear that you, <clears throat> at some point, you no longer supervised Deborah Keither, and I believe you said that that was sometime in December of 2020. The question then is, after December of 2020, let's say till March 15th of uh, 2021, are you aware of uh, Dr. Keither's status? No. No, okay. Do you know Catrice Cotton? I do. How do you know Catrice Cotton? She's the chief of school of administration. Okay, and where is that? In Does Milwaukee she, Public School. Uh, where is that in relation to you? Does she supervise you? No. Is she above you uh, in the MPS hierarchy? She would be above me. She's a chief. She's a chief. Do you know Angela Ford? I do. How do you know Angela Ford? She was one of my direct reports. Okay, during what time period? Uh, from October to July 1st. July 1st of this year? Correct. Okay. Do you know why she's no longer your direct report? Um, there's been restructuring in the Office of Academics, and so she'll be reporting in College of Career Readiness. Okay, who initiated that restructuring? Um, the chief, Jennifer Mims Howell, the chief. Jennifer Mims, I'm sorry. Howell. Do you know Catherine Headley? No. Do you know... Marla Brunei. Brunei? Yes. Yes. How do you know her? Um, she was the chief of communications, I believe, when I got there. Okay. And what was your relationship with her, uh, your working relationship with her? Um... I didn't work with her directly. Um, we've had, when we've had communication things to go out, like if I wanted something to go directly to teachers, um, she would work with me to get those direct communications out. But that's the only direct communication or direct working that I have with Marla. Okay, and what's your working relationship <coughs> with Keith Posley? I'm not sure how to answer, I mean, I don't work with him directly. Okay. 
Is there any indirect means in which you work with Keith Posley? Um, I, I used to attend, and I still do actually, some of the academic meetings. What's an academic meeting? Um, where Dr. Posley and the chiefs um, meet about, you know, Principal Institute, um, primarily about, I'm, my participation is usually around Principal Institute because I, I organize that. Are you still doing that activity? Yes. Okay. The so Principal Institute is that sometimes referred to as PLI? Correct. Okay. What's your working relationship with Jeremiah Holiday? Well, now I don't have one because he's no longer my supervisor. When he was my supervisor, I had one on ones in meetings like that with my supervisor. Okay. When did he <coughs> stop being a supervisor? I don't recall the exact date. When he was reassigned, then I then he was no longer my supervisor. I don't know that date, though. Was it in 2021? I actually don't remember when Dr. Holliday got reassigned. Okay. <coughs> Can I drink my water? <coughs> Do you have a new supervisor that's not Dr. Holliday? I do. Who is that? <clears throat> Jennifer Mims Howe. Okay, and when did she become your supervisor? Um, again, I don't know the de exact date. She was serving as a, we were all directors and she was kind of just serving as a interim, but she wasn't really my supervisor at that time. And then when she became the interim chief, I don't know the date of that. Okay, <clears throat> and you also don't know, uh, you don't know an exact date, but you also don't know an inexact date, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And is getting a new supervisor, is that a significant event or an insignificant event for you? I would think it's a significant event. And do you tend to remember significant events? Or no? Yes. Did you ever discuss Deborah Keither with uh, Dr. Holliday? Check the formal questions for Brian Vig. Go ahead and answer if you can. Um, Dr. Holliday was my supervisor, and Debbie Keither was my direct report. So. I may have discussed her as well as all of my people reporting under me just in terms of how things were going, but not her specifically. Okay. And I, on October, from October 19th of 2020 to let's say January 15th of 2021, did you talk to uh, Dr. Holliday about Deborah Keitha? Check the form questions, Brian Vig. Also asked and answered. Go ahead and answer if you can. I don't understand the question. It sounded like the same question, so maybe I didn't understand. So the first question was whether or not you had ever talked to Dr. Holliday about uh, Dr. Keither. The question that's being posed, to my understanding, is whether or not uh, you talked to Dr. Holliday about Dr. Keither between October 19th of 2020 to January 15th of 2021. Can you answer that question, please? Same objections. Go ahead and answer if you can. I talked to Dr. Holliday about Debbie Keither and all of my direct reports during that time when he was my supervisor. Okay. And what was the nature of those talks? Um, well, I was a new employee. He was my supervisor. We talked about how things were going. Um, we talked about was I meeting, was I having regular one-on-ones with everybody? Was I still having, um, he had established Monday meetings. We talked about how the Monday meetings were going. So just check-ins on how I was doing and how I was following through if I needed support. 
Okay, and what specifically about Dr. Keitha did you discuss with Dr. Holliday? Um, the only, I mean, I, I talked about, again, I don't believe her specifically, but how difficult it was working with the team and Dr. Keither in particular. Okay. And what do you mean, when you say team, what do you mean? The people that directly reported to me, okay. which would be all of the content specialists. All the what specialists? The content area specialists. Is that uh, curriculum and instruction or something else? Curriculum and instruction. Okay. So the content areas and curriculum instruction, uh, do you know what those are? Um, math, science, social studies, the library of media, writing, reading. And were there any areas that Dr. Holiday was particularly focused on? No. So you said you were having difficulty with the content team. Is uh, what was causing the difficulty? Um, the team in general would let me know how they hadn't been included in decisions in the past, how they were never asked to come to the table, their voices were never heard. And so it was difficult moving towards what I wanted to do for the team and moving forward. And so it was the team in particular, Dr. Keither really wanted to make sure that, that we always talked about what hadn't happened, what wasn't done, what they weren't allowed to do. And so it was very difficult as a new person trying to move forward. Okay. And what were some of those things that hadn't happened? Um, as I just mentioned, they weren't, um, according to them, they weren't asked to be at the table. Their voices weren't heard. They were told to do things um, at last minute. Um, they were never invited to share what they thought, their opinions, and things like that. And what were some of the things they were told to do last minute? Um, I don't know, specifics, assignments. Um, just assignments, I think manuals. Um, at that time, I think there was an ambitious instruction manual or something like that. Just They just talked about, in general, that was the common theme, having to do things last minute. How about curriculum plans? I don't know specifically if curriculum plans were named, but that was a common theme, that things were being asked of them last minute. Okay, and this is the curriculum and instruction department Correct. Do you make, uh, develop, rather, curriculum plans in that department? We do. Is that the primary function of your department? I would say um, coming up with the curriculum plans, the guides, and conducting professional development. Okay. Between October 19th of 2020 and January 15th of 2021, did you ever talk to Calvin Furman about Debbie Keitha? I, again, I don't know the dates that I talked to him, but I do recall him talking with me because of a, um, I think uh, Dr. Keither had asked him to, or, com or com reported a complaint to him and he was following through with it. So he reached out to me. When did he reach out to you? I don't know the date that he reached out to me. Okay. But he reached out to you about a complaint that Debbie Keither filed, is that correct? Correct. Okay, and do you know what the nature of the complaint was? It was... This is all a blur. Um, I don't recall the exact nature. It, it had something to do with Dr. Holliday. Yes, I do remember, because he wanted to know if Dr. Holliday... Um, kept me from making decisions. That's what it was. Okay. Had Dr. Holliday kept you from making decisions? No. Okay, I'll never let him finish his question before I answer. Oh, okay. It. 
about how long was this? Well, let's scratch that. By what means did you have this conversation with Calvin Fermat? Uh, um, I believe it was a phone call. I'm pretty sure it was a phone call, but it could have been a Google Meet. I don't, it wasn't in person, I know that. If Google Meet, is that a normal way you uh, talk with other MPS employees? From the time I started, it has been the norm because I started during the pandemic and we hadn't had face-to-face -face meetings. And is Google Meet the approved uh, method of doing non-face-to-face -face meetings? Yes. Do you have any knowledge whether or not uh, the conversations held on Google Meets are saved? I don't know. Have you ever referred back to a conversation that you've had on Google Meet? Not that I recall. Oh. Is it possible that the Google Meet conversation has been saved? I don't know. I, I, to my knowledge, our policy is that you can't record without someone's permission. So, but I don't know. Okay. So when you say you're meeting on Google Meets, this is a video call. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. I understand. Thank you. So about how long did this video call last? Well, I don't know if it was a video call. It was either a phone call or a video call. I just know it wasn't in person. Um, and probably, I don't know, seven, eight minutes. I don't know. It wasn't a long, extensive conversation. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. About how long had you been employed at MPS uh, the second time when you had this conversation? I don't understand how long I, was I employed the second time. I don't understand. So you started MPS the second time, as I understand it, on October 19th of 2020. Right. Right. So the second time would be as the CNI director, right, before you were a teacher. Is that accurate? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So another way to put that question is uh, how long after October 19th do you think this conversation happened? Uh, within, within the month. Okay. Did you ever communicate with Calvin Furman at any other time regarding Debbie Keitha? No, not that I recall. Between October 19th, 2020 and January 15th, 2021, did you discuss uh, Debbie Keither with Teresa Freiberg? I don't believe so. During October 19th of 2020 to January 15th of 2021, did you discuss Debbie Keither with Keith Posley? Yes. Okay. When did you discuss Debbie Keither with Keith Posley? I don't know the exact date. Um, sometime, I believe, in December. Was it at the beginning of December or at the end of December? I don't recall the date that it was. Was it before Christmas or after Christmas? I believe it was before Christmas. Okay. And what was the nature of your discussion with Keith Posey? Um, I had a back and forth exchange with Dr. Keither, whatever day this was, um, about um, some curriculum that was going to be ending. Dr. Keither had alerted me that she had um, been trying sounding out the alarm for I think over a year, that curriculum was going to be ending, students would be without literacy materials, um, and that whatever that date was, it was fast approaching. 
And so she and I were having an exchange with me trying to find out, well, what do we need to do? Um, and Dr. Keither continued to just, well, what do you want to do? Well, what do you want me to do? And I'm like, I don't know what I want you to do. You're the literacy manager. You've been talking about, you said you've been talking about this. People wouldn't listen. So do you have any ideas? Do you have a plan? And she kept on saying, well, well, I'll do it if you want me to. Tell me what you want me to do. And it just was going nowhere. I was coming to her as the literacy manager, trying to get help with what seemed to me a very, very serious situation that our kids were going to be without literacy materials. And it sounded like, I don't know the dates, but it was happening soon. Whatever licenses, whatever materials that they were able to use, it was ending. And so after going through this back and forth exchange with, with her, um, I... Um, I went to the super, I printed out the emails ex exchanges. I went to Dr. Posley's office. Um, my supervisor was not, I don't know if he was on vacation or sick, but he wasn't there. Um, I panicked. I went to the superintendent's office. I asked Dr. Posley, could I speak with him? Um, and he said, sure. I said, I just need some, some help. I showed him the first email where I was asking Dr. Keither, a question about what we, what should we do? What could we do? And I wanted to know from his perspective, is there something wrong with this communication? Because I'm, because I'm trying to figure out how, I, why I got such hostile, such combative responses. And so I showed him the first email alone, just me asking for some, some information from Dr. Keither. And I said, you know, can you read this? Can you tell me, is there something wrong with, do you see something wrong with how I'm communicating? Do you, he read it and he said, that's pretty clear. You're asking for, you know, some help with getting curriculum. And I said, are you sure? And he said, it seems clear to me. So then I showed him the response that I got from Dr. Keither afterwards. And he looked at it, he, you know, moved, just here. And then I just said, I don't know how to move forward. I don't know how the kids are gonna get curriculum. Like, I'm responsible for this. I was like, this seems major to me. I said, as you can see from the exchange, she is not going to help me. I am not gonna get any help from her. I don't know what to do. And that was, that was our conversation. And he said, okay. I'm like, well, okay. Because <laughs> um, that was all he, he said. So he read my first email exchange, or my first email, yeah, with asking her for help and then I didn't even show him the whole exchange until after he said, it's clear to me you're asking a question. And then I said, well, this is what I get in return. And then I just started rambling, you know, well, I don't know how to, what to do. She's not going to help me. She's not going to give me, the kids are going to be without curriculum. And I just went on and I said, I don't know what to do. I don't know what we can do. She's the literacy manager. I don't know enough about where we are, what to do, what plans. And I said, but as you can see, she is not going to help me. And that was the extent of the conversation. And did you ever have any meetings with Dr. Posley before this direct one-on-one -on -one meetings? I'm sorry. Did you ever have any one-on-one -on -one meetings with Dr. Posley before this uh, conversation with Dr. Keita? No, I don't have one-on-ones with Dr. Posley. Did you ever have any one-on-ones with Dr. Posley after your conversation with, uh, about Dr. Keita? No. And you said that you were responsible for the literacy curriculum. Is that right? Well, I'm responsible for the for curriculum, and so literacy would be one of them. Okay. So it's also true that you're responsible for the literacy curriculum. Correct. Okay. And would your predecessor have been in, also been in charge of the literacy curriculum? The, the person in senior, the, in curriculum instruction, the director of curriculum instruction, is that what you're asking? I'm asking, would your predecessor have been responsible? Scratch that, would you read the question, please? <clears throat> and would your predecessor have been, also been in charge of the literacy curriculum? Yes, the senior director of curriculum and instruction would be responsible for all content areas in the Department of Curriculum and Instruction. They would oversee all of those areas, including literacy. Okay. And do you know who your predecessor was? Um, I believe Vicki Burley. I don't know her 
Burley Brown or Curly Brown. I don't know her exact name. Vicky Brown. Okay. And did you take over her office? Yes. Yes, okay. And did you take over her files? Yes. Did you read her files? Um, I have some of them. Okay, which files did you read? I can't recall. She had lots of files, lots of very old um, things, initiatives, grants, things like that that were still in her office. Did you read Debbie Keither's file? No. She didn't have, I don't recall her having um, her, her files for any of the specialists. If so, I didn't see them. Did you read Angela Ford's file? No. Did you read Letish Reed's file? No, I don't even know if she reported. If she did, she didn't. She doesn't report to that department when I came. Uh, did you read Michelle Wade's personnel file? No. Did you read Patricia Ellis's personnel file? No. And have you ever referenced uh, anything in, let's say, uh, Angela Ford's personnel file to Angela Ford? Check the farm questions, no. broad and vague. Have, have you ever referenced anything in Debbie Keither's personal f file to anyone else? Same objection. No. Okay. Have you ever, uh, did you read Jose Garcia Hoven's personnel file? No. Have you ever referenced anything in Jose Garcia personnel file to anyone else? No. Run big. Sorry. Okay. Did you interview for the job of uh, Senior Director of Curriculum and Instruction? Yes. When did you interview for that job? I don't know the exact date. Was it in the summer of 2020? It was. Okay. How did you learn of the availability of the job of Senior Director of Curriculum and Instruction? It was posted. And you read that post? Yes. Where did you read the post? I believe on the MPS career, wherever they do posting. Okay. And why were you at that uh, website? Well, I was at that website and many websites because I was looking for another position. Okay. So prior to applying for that position, what experience did you have in curriculum or instruction? Um, well, I've been in, in education since 1990 as a teacher. Um, all of my work has been in um, either working for Milwaukee Public Schools or in partnership with Milwaukee Public Schools. I've been a teacher, I've been a mentor, I've been a director of an alternative uh, certification program that um, employed teachers for Milwaukee Public Schools. I was a professor at UWM where we prepared teachers for primarily Milwaukee Public Schools. And I was a director of uh, education um, for Next Door, which was for early childhood. Um, so all of my experiences were from P pre-K through 16, and so I thought this is a, a, a very good fit for a director of curriculum and instruction. Do you know what a curriculum plan is? Yes. What is a curriculum plan? A curriculum plan is an outline that um, designates um, what should be taught when. It gives a sequence of um, of curriculum goals, um, objectives, um, and it lays out the plan for someone to follow so that they are doing, usually it incorporates learning standards um, so that a teacher could, um, so that we can ensure that a teacher has, um, is giving high quality curriculum instruction that's guided by 
instructional standards or Wisconsin standards in particular. Are there state laws that govern curriculum plans? Yes. Okay. Are you aware of what those laws are? I'm not sure what you're asking. Most of what we do is guided by the Department of Public Instruction. Now, the curriculum plan itself is not guided by DPI, but the standards that we would incorporate in the plan would be guided by the Department of Public Instruction. Okay, and when you say guided, uh, is the DPI standards, are those optional or mandatory? The standards are mandatory. Okay. And is your compliance, is MPS's compliance with the standards optional or mandatory? It's mandatory. Okay. So uh, going back to the experience that you just listed, explain to me how that relates to developing a curriculum plan. How does the experience, I'm not sure what you're asking. Well, I'm asking how your job experience prior to obtaining the position of director, senior director of curriculum instruction applies to the, the task of forming a curriculum plan. Okay. Well, the, the job that I currently have is, is more than just that, but for a curriculum plan, I would say experience because I was a teacher. Um, I worked with um, the teacher uh, preparation department at UWM. I was the director. We worked with teachers to make sure that they knew about uh, common core standards, Department of Public Instruction, how to do lesson planning. Um, I was the person who was over our uh, MCEA program, Middle Childhood and Early Adolescence, where we worked with teachers to prepare them to be able to do things like a curriculum plan. Um, at Next Door, I was the director of education, where the same thing, I oversaw um, people making lesson plans, um, utilizing resources to incorporate standards. Um, Next Door was a charter with MPS, and so as a charter school, making sure that we followed all the, the guidelines to do curriculum plans. So I've had, um, in my last three roles, um, overseeing curriculum plan. I mean, even in this role, I'm not the one who makes the curriculum plan, but I do oversee it, and I've had experience doing that in my last several positions. Is a lesson plan and a curriculum plan the same thing? No. What's the difference? Well, a lesson plan is your day-to-day, -day, what you're going to do in front of children, the teaching and learning that's going to occur. A curriculum plan is more the how it's going to unfold over time. Okay, and what percent of your experience has to do with lesson plans as opposed to curriculum plans? I don't know how to give a percentage. Um, I've had experience with both, more so lesson planning when I was a teacher, but curriculum planning and guiding that work I've been doing for the last 15 years. Again, as the uh, middle school, childhood, early adolescence director at UWM, preparing uh, in the teacher preparation program, that's a main function of making sure that those students in the program know how to do curriculum guides. So again, I wasn't making the guides, but I worked with all of the faculty that were in that program um, to do that. Um, and at Next Door, um, as the education director, um, the same thing. I don't make the plans, but I was in the position to oversee them, which is what I'm doing now. I'm not making the plans. I work with the managers and the curriculum specialists who make the plans. And do teachers uh, usually make lesson plans or curriculum plans? Teachers make lesson plans. And we, it should, we provide the curricular guides so that they can, um, so that they have support in making their lesson plans. Okay. And how at Next Door, or scratch that, at Next Door, did you oversee the creation of a curriculum plan? Yes, that was part of my duty as and the education director. Okay, and what did you do to supervise the creation of a curriculum plan? 
I'm not quite sure of the question. Um, again, there's education managers that I over that. Well, I didn't actually oversee it. The, there's educa there were education managers that were directed by site directors. I, I oversaw the site directors. And so we would talk about part of their one-on-ones and part of our meetings would be around the curriculum that was planned. Um, so again, I don't, I, I haven't been in a position in a long time where I'm, where I was actually making lesson plans or curriculum plans, but I have been in positions where that's part of what I had to do is make sure they were in place. Okay, so it's fair to say that your experience with curriculum plans uh, prior to obtaining the position of Senior Director of Curriculum Instruction was to oversee the creation of curriculum plans. Is that right? I would say that's pretty accurate. I oversee the plans, yep. And that occurred at Nextdoor Foundation? That occurred at Nextdoor, yes. And about how many students are there at Nextdoor Foundation? I don't. I don't recall how many students are at next door. Do you recall how many students are at MPS? Actually, about ten thousand, but no, I don't know the exact number of students that we serve. Ten thousand. Is that your answer for MPS students? That would be a, an approximate. I don't know the exact number. Okay. So, is based on your experience, do you believe that MPS has more? students than the next door foundation oh, definitely okay is it qualitatively different uh the experience at mps versus next door foundation check the forum questions broad and vague go ahead and answer if you can the number of students is vastly different yes okay and is the number of uh, management is that vastly different at MPS versus Nextdoor Foundation? I'm um, not really sure how to answer that. Um, the, the things that I manage are the same, um, and they were the same at UWM because I was managing programs. And so, again, I don't manage the students, so the number of students is kind of irrelevant. The What we the program is what I manage. And so that, what I would say, would be the same. I manage education managers. I manage to make sure that we have the curriculum in place. And I did that at Nextdoor and at UWM. And the students are the <coughs> end users of the curriculum plan, is that correct? Yes. Okay. When you started as the Senior Director of Curriculum Instruction, uh, were you a probationary employee? Um, I believe all positions are one year probationary. I believe, I'm not sure. Well, do you believe that your position was probationary? I do. Okay. And uh, do you know what your rate of pay was when you started? Um, no, I don't actually. Okay. Are you aware of whether or not you got a raise uh, within the first month of uh, starting your position? Um, I got a, a salary al a re readjustment within a short period of time. I don't think it was a raise. What does salary readjustment mean to you? Um, it means that um, as I investigated um, the salaries in my department and the people that I was overseeing, um, realizing that I was very lowballed. Um, in fact, um, I think I kind of was aware of that before I started. Um, and I had asked for some negotiation and I was told that that was the best that they could do. And so getting in the position and seeing the <clears throat> amount of work involved in the posi position and the number of people that I supervise, and the number of people that were <clears throat> under me that were really at my salary, um, <clears throat> I asked for a, a salary readjustment. Who did you ask that from? I talked to Dr. Holliday about it. 
Um, and he said he would see what he could do, but he's not a part of salary negotiations. Um, he wasn't a part of what they offered me. And so he would, and I said, well, I don't, I asked for who all was involved, who could I speak to? I was told I was speaking to the highest person who could make the decision and that's the best they could do. And, but in the position, I said, this is not, this is not acceptable. And so I asked him, you know, I was talking to him about it and he was, you know, taking notes and saying, letting me know he wasn't responsible for, he's not in on what they offered me, but he would um, take the information and see what he could do. Did you talk to anybody other than Dr. Holliday? Nope. Do you know what Dr. Holliday did? I don't know what he did. Okay. Or who he had to talk to. Do you know who authorizes uh, salary readjustment? I do not. Okay. And did you get a salary readjustment? Or sorry, how much was the salary readjustment? I, I really don't remember because I don't know what I started with and I don't know what it went to actually. Like those details, I don't know. I know I came in low, I complained, and there was a salary adjustment. I wanna say maybe 4,000 difference or something like that. Does 8,000 seem possible? It could be, I know it was, it was, whatever it was, it was more aligned with the people that I was supervising, but I don't know the exact amount. What does aligned mean there? What does what? Aligned mean. Uh, meaning that I had never been in a position where um, the director was making less than the people that they supervise. And so that was what my complaint was. And so when I say aligned, whatever the adjustment was, whether it was 4,000, 8,000, 10,000, whatever it was, it sounded like that was more aligned where I wasn't making lower than the people that I was supervising. How many of your uh, direct reports were making more than you? I don't know the number. Okay. Do you, do you know who was making more than you? Um, at this moment, I don't know. Like I said, I, this, I brought the situation forward. I complained. And I haven't really had to think about these things for a while, so I don't know the actual details. Well, how did you learn that uh, your subordinates were making more money than you? Um, well, there's a, on the board, in the board book, like I think there was, I believe somebody was coming up. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, the board book has, it's a public record. So I'm sure I, we did some research and I had some, some other folks were looking through board, previous board things, I don't know. Okay, when you said we did some research, who's the we? Um, well, I did and then I had, um, who else did that? I believe, a, I believe, and I'm not, I, I'm not sure, because I don't want to, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I know I looked at board, board documents. That, that I know for sure. Okay, why were you doing this research? Because when I came into the position, I knew I was low-balled, and I wanted to see, you know, I assumed I was low-balled. Um, and then I looked into it to see if I was correct, and I was. Okay. By we did some research, do you mean other MPS employees? No. Okay, who do you mean? Um, I don't, I, I, that I'm not gonna stand to because I'm not sure if I had asked someone to do that or not. It wasn't anybody from MPS. I do have friends that work outside of MPS, um, but I don't know if for this particular thing if I asked them to do that or not. Are so. you refusing to answer the question? No, I'm not refusing. I'm trying to be as accurate as possible. I know I've had help with many things um, as su people support me through this difficult time that it's been at NPS. But for this particular one, I'm not sure if I had help or not. So I know I did look through board, board documents. Okay, but it's fair to say that within your first month of employment, you were researching the salary of your subordinates? Yes. Okay. Do you consider salary information to be personnel records? Chief Performance Questions, Brad and Dag, also Foundation. Go ahead and answer if you can. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't know how to answer that. I don't think. I don't think so. What was your position at uh, University of Wisconsin Milwaukee? I was an associate professor. In what department? The education department. Curriculum instruction. And who was your supervisor there? Um, it's kind of difficult. We don't really have supervisors. The chair, I mean, I don't, we don't really have supervisors, but the chair at the time was uh, Linda Post and then Mike Steele. Okay. And did you work at that time with, uh, while you were employed by UWM, with any MPS employees that you work with now? When I was at UWM, did I work with any MPS employees that I work with now? No. Did you teach any MPS employees that you work with now? Not that I recall. Okay. Were you taught by any MPS employees that you work with now? I'm trying to think of who all the people I come in contact with. No, not that I recall. Okay. Were you taught by any MPS board members past or present uh, at, MP, uh, at UWM? Not that I recall. Okay. Did you have any training for the position of Senior Director of Curriculum Instruction? I'm not sure which training on the job I can, yes, I can re-ask the question then. Did you have any training from MPS for your position as Senior Director of Curriculum and Instruction? Um, uh, there was not an official training program. I mean, I had like um, payroll trainings that I went to, but there was no documented program, like a two-week program or 12 weeks, nothing like that. But Okay, how did you know how to do your job of Senior Director of Curriculum Instruction? On the job training. Okay, who provided it on the job training? Uh, Dr. Holliday provided guidance. Um, the, I met with all of the specialists to you know, be abreast of what they were doing um, and so to know how to, to lead them, to know where they were going, what we needed to do. So. Just one-on-ones with them, one-on-ones with Dr. Holliday, and then you know just special trainings that MPS did provide around payroll or budget, stuff like that. Okay, and about how long did that uh, training last? Which training? Any of it. Well, I would. I mean, I'm almost two years into the role. Um, I think I'm trying. I mean, it's like I said, it's not a formalized training, so. On the job training um, happens all the time. Uh, there's new things that I'm still learning. Are you still meeting one on one with Dr. Holiday? No. Okay, when did that end? It ended when his position changed, when he was no longer my supervisor. I don't know the date for that. Okay, was that before or after January of 2021? I don't know when his last day was, so I, whenever his last day was, that's when I stopped with one-on-ones. I don't know when he changed positions. Okay, the question is, are you aware of whether or not his change in position happened before or after uh, January of 2021? I don't know when his change of position happened. 
Do you know if his change of position happened before or after you met one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Posley about Dr. Keither? He was still in position then because he wasn't, because he wasn't there that day. So I, I wouldn't have been looking for him if he wasn't in position. So that I know for sure. He was still in position then. He just wasn't there that day. Okay. And are you aware of whether Debbie Keith has made any complaints? Takes the farm questions for his bag. Go ahead and answer if you can. I'm aware of the complaint that I'm here. I mean, I'm aware because I got the deposition for this. Okay. How did you become aware uh, that Debbie Keither filed a complaint? I received the deposition. And that's the only way? Yeah, I mean, well, I heard, I mean, I watched the news. I heard some things on the news, but formally from the deposition that I received. Has NPS ever interviewed you about Debbie Keither's complaint uh, prior to last week? Has NPS? No. Has anybody else ever interviewed you regarding this case prior to 2000, uh, prior to last week? Um, my attorney sitting here today, we went over it on Friday to prepare me for this deposition, what it was going to be like. Okay. And I guess maybe I was trying to not encapsulate that, so I'll ask the question another way. Prior to that discussion on Friday, had you talked to anybody who worked for the city of Milwaukee regarding Debbie Keither's case? No. Okay, thank you. And um, are you aware of whether Debbie Keither filed any complaints against Dr. Holliday? Again, that information is in the, dep in the paperwork that I looked at for the deposition. Okay, so prior to <clears throat> looking at that paperwork in preparation from this deposition, were you aware that Debbie Keither filed a complaint against Dr. Holliday? Not formally. Like I said, I did see some news stories <clears throat> um, where she was on TV. <clears throat> okay, and uh, your discussion with Calvin Furman about Dr. Keither, that did not alert you that uh, Debbie Keither had filed a complaint against Dr. Holliday? No. Why not? Because he didn't talk about a file or a case. He just asked me, he made the call seem like it was a check-in that he want, because he ended the call saying he wanted to assure me um, that if I felt that I was not being able to make decisions that I could come to him or but he didn't say anything about a case or, or anything like that. He wanted to know if I was being allowed to make decisions. That was the nature of his call. Okay, and who, based on your experience, who would be preventing you from making those decisions? Check foreign press with Broad and Vague as well as argumentative. Go ahead and answer if you can. I don't know who would prevent me from making decisions. Okay, was anybody preventing you from making any no. decisions? No. Okay. And who was the, was anybody else at this meeting brought up other than Dr. Holliday? I'm going to the wrong question. I, I think that's, facts not in evidence. But go ahead and answer if you can. I don't know which meeting you're referring to. Okay. So you just said that you talked to Calvin Furman uh, very early in your employment. Correct. Okay. And he called me. He yes. called you. And that's the only time that you talked to him. Yes. Okay. And that's, in fact, the only time that you communicated with him. Correct. Okay. So, um, so during that conversation that you had with Calvin Furman, did you discuss uh, Dr. Holliday? During that conversation with Calvin Furman, he was asking if Dr. Holliday... Um, was if I had it, well, he wanted to know how things were going for me, and then he did want to know, um, I think, it, because he was following up with Dr. Keithers, so he wanted to know, was I being prevented from making decisions? 
And I told him I was not. He wanted to let me know that if I ever felt like I wasn't able to make decisions, that I could come to him. Okay. Just one second. <clears throat> okay. So was anybody else discussed at that meeting? No. Okay. So when you were saying Calvin Furman was asking you whether you were being allowed to make decisions, do you believe he was referring to Calvin, uh, to Dr. Holliday or somebody else? Dr. Holliday. Get some exhibits here. Want to go off the record? Or? If they're just back there. Oh. Okay. Starting with number one. Yes, one? please. Okay. Are we doing these individually for each deposition, or do you want to do them concurrently for all? I mean, we should do them concurrently. Let's hope. <coughs> we do. I however, think that's a good plan. You want to do it. Yeah, I think that's a good plan. Oh boy. Need... I hope I have some readers. <laughs> oh, I can't see that. That's okay, guys. Oh, thank God. Can, uh, can we go off the record, please? Stand by. We're going off the record. The time is 9.29 a.m. We'll make this the end of media unit number one.